to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, one true God forever and ever. Amen. Respected Nainanachin, dear Chamachin, parents, brothers, and sisters in Christ, today is the second Sunday following the Feast of the Pentecost. We remember the Pentecost, of course, as the day when the Holy Spirit came upon the disciples who were fearful, those who were scared, those who guarded their lives and were nervous about what would come of their belief in Jesus Christ, whom the Jews crucified, who they persecuted. And we see a remarkable change, of course, in the Pentecost that we ourselves were involved in when we received the Holy Chrism, the anointing of the Holy Spirit in our baptism. And we see a people who were fearful becoming courageous, a people who were nervous about their daily work, about their daily life, about their survival, no longer needing to worry about those things because they had full assurance and faith in God. Meaning, if they were persecuted, they were willing to take it because God allowed it. If they were murdered, they were willing to be murdered because they knew that they were doing the work of God. That level of faith and that trust that happens when we are born again in the Holy Spirit, when we are renewed in the Spirit, this is life. This is freedom from slavery because there is nothing that can hold us, nothing that can scare us, and nothing that can dominate our lives because we trust that God allows and will take care of us so long as we remain faithful to Him. And in the weeks following the Pentecost, as we know from last week's reading till today's reading to next week's reading, we will see a dialogue each week that the church has for us. Last week, the week after the Pentecost, the birthday of the church, we see this, we see the gospel passage talking about the body of Christ, the eternal food, the food that will allow us to never go hungry again. And so we have the center of the Eucharist being emphasized to we who are the believers. And from this, we see this week, we have the sending out of the, of the disciples, where Jesus says, go out from village to village and enter it, grant it, you grant it your peace, preach the kingdom of God, take nothing with you. This is a passage that we read very familiarly, we know it. Because what we see is, from the Holy Eucharist, from the body and blood of Christ, we are filled with His Spirit and we go out into the world to preach and to heal. And that was the mission that Christ gave to the disciples in today's reading taken from St. Matthew chapter 10, verses 5 through 16. Is that we were called to go out and bring a message of hope, a message of salvation, and through this message, through the Word of God, to bring healing to the people of this world. And especially on the wonderful occasion of the consecration of this temple, we see it through the prayers of the last two days, and I think that may be a reason why our, our numbers are a little low today, because we had Friday service, we had Saturday service, yesterday was very long, and we know how difficult it is to get up each morning and bring ourselves to church. And yet on this wonderful occasion and experience in which the Holy Spirit, through the chrism, anointed and sanctified and dedicated this church, we are reminded first and foremost that it is not this building that we should be, that we should be glorying in. But rather it is the house of God, it is the mission, it is the church with a capital C. It is our mission in this world to bring light to this world. It is our mission in this world to bring the kingdom of God, the message of repentance, the message of salvation to this world. And so constantly in the prayers of the dedication, in the prayers of the consecration, 
we were reminded over and over how we are being consecrated as a community. We are being consecrated as individuals. Because it is our mission. This church does nothing by itself. A church which is empty is of no value in this world. A church that does not have life that does not go out and bring joy to others. It is no church at all because the church of God, as we see in the Acts, as we see on the day of Pentecost, we see that it is a living church. It is a church that goes to another person and says, come and experience Christ. And the reason may be that our church across the board, not just this individual parish, but across the board, is that we fail to be changed people. And that is not a lacking or a failure of God, because God promises us that He will change us. God promises us that He will transform us. But it is a lacking in our coming to this church, in preparing for the body and blood of Christ, and then taking Christ back out into the world. And that is why we see this dialogue in the days following the Pentecost. We see that we come together every Sunday for the Holy Qurbana. We should be filled with His body and His blood, His presence, so that when we walk out into the world, it is not me or you that, that the people see, but it is Christ working in us. And when the disciples went out, it was no longer they themselves. It was no longer Simon Peter. It was no longer John. It was no longer James who people were seeing. It was Christ. And that is why when Christ sends them out and he says, if anyone rejects you, they are rejecting me. If anyone greets you, they are greeting me. And I think when we come to an understanding of our identity, that we are not here as spectators. That we who have gathered here this morning, we are not here to be mere witnesses who watch the Holy Qurbana. And I think one of the only issues with this church is how far you all are from the altar. Because I think it is a danger that you can just become complacent watching the Qurbana. Because God has blessed us with this temple, let us not fall into a trap of being spectators. We must be participants in the Holy Liturgy. We must be participants in the body and in the blood of Christ. And energized and filled with Christ, we enter into the world. And that is why Jesus, knowing this and showing us the example of the disciples, prefigured it in his words, saying, take nothing with you. Take no money, take no sandal, take no tunic. The reason was not to make the disciples' lives harder, but that they would eventually have faith that God will provide. And that is a hard step to take, because we see what happens, though, when they are fearful and taking care of themselves, and when they allow God to take care of them, they go out and they are courageous. And so, dear parents, brothers and sisters, on this the second Sunday of Pentecost, let us examine our limitations and what keeps us from being that light of Christ in this world. What keeps us from being the joy that brings people to the church, that keeps us from being Christ. And I would say that many of us, it is our fear and it is our desire to control as much as we can. It is to be as safe as we can. It is to control all the variables in our lives, whether it be education or job or our children's friends or our friends, whatever it may be, to control as many variables as possible to make sure nothing bad happens. And if this is our goal, then we will have no life in Christ. Because we see what happened when the disciples were filled with the Spirit. That they gave away all those fears and they had true freedom. 
And so we are reminded on this Sunday that Christ sent his disciples with nothing, assuring them that God would provide. Trusting that his disciples would learn to trust God, to depend on him. And if you look at it, our level and our relationship with God is almost entirely based on how and whether we depend on Him. So as our reflection and our meditation, as we approach and prepare ourselves for the, for the Holy Qurbana, for the Body and Blood of Christ, let us submit ourselves to God and His will, and let us learn and trust. Let us depend on Him, and let Him then transform us, that we may go out and do the mission of this church, and that we may go out and bring glory to God, and that this weekend, this Friday, this Saturday, this dedication, the consecration, that it may not be lifeless, but that it may be representative of Christ, and that this church in this community may be a witness to the Holy Spirit. Let us pray these things and let us prepare ourselves to receive Jesus Christ his body and his blood. For he is holy now and ever and unto the ages of ages.